Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For those who don't uh, know me or recognize me, I'm Pastor Chris Asbury from Grace Lutheran Church just down the road. Pleased to share our midweek message with you today. And that message is based on John uh, chapter 19, verse 26, where Jesus says these last words, Woman, behold your son. Famous last words words. There are many in our world famous phrases. I was trying to pick up something heavy the other day and uh, uh, as I thought to myself and said out loud, I got it, I got it, I, uh, it, it soon sent me to the chiropractor, right? Famous last words, I got it. Well, there are some that are said in comedy, some that are said in all seriousness. Some are said seriously or, or quietly uh, with his last words, Winston Churchill said, I'm bored with it all. Uh, with his last words, Groucho Marx, while he was dying, let, let out one last quip. He said, this is no way to live. And uh, Vince Lombardi of football fame, as he was uh, sharing his last message with his dear family, he turned to his wife Marie and he said, happy anniversary. I love you. Ben Franklin, as he was laying in his bed uh, and his daughter was there and helping him turn from one side to another, he spoke to her, a dying man can do nothing easy. Famous last words. Jesus had seven that we've been hearing him speak from the cross to us and to those who were in his midst in that a dark hour of his crucifixion and we are hearing them one week at a time throughout this Lent and we even get to do that remotely now as uh, you all are hearing this via recording and today again Jesus last word to us is woman behold your son when family members face death we often focus on what they're saying and what they're doing in their last hours and maybe you've noticed how every last message or every even last breath is more precious to us as people some of these messages that we hold on to are messages of love or hope or of humor and some speak of good times and some speak of bad times and some are spoken in rhythm and timely in some ways Sometimes they're rushed. Sometimes we don't even have a chance to hear that final message. And so then we rush back to the last time in our memory or maybe in our messages in our phones or email or, or letters. What was the last thing I said to them? What's the last thing they said to me or wrote to me? And our hearts rush to those final conversations days, months, maybe even years ago whatever we can remember or grab all hold on to in that shock or that flood of grief and so when nine souls died this last winter while flying through fog on the way to a basketball clinic millions of people unknown to kobe bryant and his daughter reread his final texts and tweets and they viewed and reviewed their favorite videos of one of these famous people that they knew. Private stories be, became public and simple words gave power and needed strength to people who were flooded in sadness uh, as grief swept over them. But when Jesus says, woman, behold your son, what does he saying exactly for John and Mary. What are his words doing for them? And what do those words do for you? Well, for John and Mary, those words, woman, behold your son, give them the exact message that they need right when they need to hear it. For John and Mary, it's a message just at the right time. By this point in the Gospels, we aren't hearing of uh, Joseph anymore. Joseph, uh, Jesus' earthly father, he's not mentioned anymore and there's speculation of why. There are all sorts of different theories. Maybe he was 
uh, older than Mary, and maybe he had, he had passed on by this point. The point of the Gospels is to point us to our Heavenly Father, and so maybe that's just why he's not mentioned. But in that day, without Social Security or 401ks or health insurance, family is what provided the safety net and that primary insurance and proper care when it was needed. And so Jesus, as he's looking out for his mother, and he knows that all the other apostles are going to be martyred except John. John would be the one to live the longest. Perhaps that's why he singles out John and he says, woman, behold your son. See, he's setting up an insurance policy and a loving, caring relationship that is going to be needed in the days ahead. And the text then says that John took her into his home. Very important that we have that home and that family we so need. In some ways it's hard for us to imagine a, a world like that. We we wrestle with rising costs of insurance. We wonder some days where our, our retirement went, but it used to be that the next of kin, they were the ones who were expected and, and usually did help carry the load. And, and then the church was there to be the church as well. And so we have uh, organizations and entities that help us with that that have been born out of the church nursing homes and daycares like you have here at Christ Lutheran and uh, other facilities that we have to help families and care for their loved ones who need that care but nothing replaces family still Jesus has designed Family is the core unit for good and order and good care, giving us not only power and strength to carry on with the message that we need, but also great purpose. Great purpose and great power. What does Jesus say should happen when our families struggle, for example? Because families, sometimes families, they fail. Or sometimes families, we're just apart, we're isolated. We, we have shut-in members ourselves at Grace who can't even have their next of kin come to them right now during uh, this current lockdown that we are in. Well, for those times, he says, Jesus says, here is your mother, here is your son, here is your brother, here is your sister. He already said it uh, and explained it once in Matthew 12. Questioned by people in his own hometown who refused or were at least on the fence of faith, of believing in him and of saying, hey, your family's here. Jesus had a comeback saying, well, who really is my family? He said, well, my family, my sister, my brother, my mother, they're the ones who do the will of my father. And so it's not as though he's getting rid of family, but he redefines family in a way that he knows we need. He specifically says that the one who does the will of the father are those who believe in the one whom he has sent, namely Jesus. In other words, you might have family in your bloodlines who might not be part of your Christian family if they don't believe in Jesus. Jesus also goes on elsewhere and he says, there is a friend that sticks closer to you than a brother. And that's good news for us also today in light of this word from Jesus from the cross. This is how it is. This is how it should be more and more. Brothers and sisters doing our Heavenly Father's will, believing in the one whom he has sent, and living in love for those around us. This is not only good when our bloodlines betray us or our families fail because that happens. Families struggle. Or perhaps simply when fathers or daughters are gone in a flash. 
or in a fog. But it's also so beautiful and good for us when we realize that the blood of Jesus connects us even more closely than our DNA. The blood of Jesus connects us even more closely than our DNA. This is one of the most beautiful truths I learned. Uh, when I started going to church again late in high school, I learned, boy, I've got a lot bigger family out there and support system than I ever realized. Maybe you've noticed this too lately. We are living in a, a world that is starving for attention. More than that, we're living in a world that's starving for connection and as we're more and more disconnected in, in these days physically, we are searching for ways to be connected in real ways. Maybe you've seen pictures of, of a group of young boys or maybe you've seen it in your own house where uh, we're all on our phones and we're instead of speaking to one another, we're texting one another even in our own room. Sometimes my wife, when she hears her phone ding, she asks me, Chris, are you, are you texting me again? <laughs> From downstairs <laughs> to upstairs. We have these wonderful devices with technology, but one of the things that we are struggling with with technology is that with every advance in technology, we gain something, but sometimes we also lose something. And one of the things we're noticing, studies are being shown, is that we are, are losing a deeper bond and connection with people face to face. A little ironic, I know, because we're recording this and you're, you're hearing it. Uh, but God is with you there, and this is meant to be a deeper connection for you. Now, the blessing of that here, as we're experiencing it, is technology can bring people far away closer together. So we're here in Norfolk, and, and maybe you have a family like our church family who is a uh, uh, we have a church family that's in Tennessee or like my family I grew up in California so I have my parents and grandfather out in California a couple thousand miles away but because of one click to call uh, or one one tap on the phone for FaceTime now we're not just walking in Memphis and we're not just California dreaming, we're, it's like we're actually there with them a little bit more than we could otherwise be. But for those of us under the same roof or in the same school, with every advance in technology, we, we gain something that we also lose something. And so we have a whole generation struggling with this. Many of them are having to go back to their own homes from, from colleges now, but some of them are are not and it's the generation called the i generation kids that have grown up on iPhones and selfies now graduated to uh, apps like TikTok and uh, different dating apps by the way maybe you've heard people aren't dating as as they used to this is also a symptom of that lack of of connection and personal interaction so many of our young people are losing their sense of power, strength to carry on, and, and purpose as well that the studies that I began to refer to earlier, those studies are showing that the rates of depression and suicide are up in our colleges. Many of our young people are losing their sense of power and purpose and some are giving up. Now that's a major reason then why as mission partners we have uh, offered a, a counseling service through our, our University Lutheran Chapel right on the campus of UNL, uh, right next to the campus of, of UNL. Pastor Justin Hanneman has his office right there now uh, because of the support that we have been giving now through um, through our Missouri Synod and directly to the Lutheran Chapel there in UNL. We have helped upgrade that big time and by doing that we are helping to reach 
an ever disconnected people. People who are in search and in need of uh, needed uh, connection with Jesus and with a family. People who need strength to carry on, to get through the day, to get through the week, to get through the year, and also a purpose. So you, you, by your prayers and support for them, are helping to restore power and purpose to them. What a beautiful way the body of Christ is working together. So God's message in Jesus, Jesus speaking to us his word gives us great power and strength not only to keep going but also to keep growing as as people with purpose. As good as the advances in technology are and as good as it is we can record this and share it with you there is thankfully a reason why Jesus doesn't just beam me up Scotty uh, down from heaven to earth he didn't uh, Skype or FaceTime his image no he was actually born of the Virgin Mary and he had ten fingers and ten toes and he taught and he fed and he healed thousands and he finally suffered and speaking these last words he died for all of humanity dying the way we die he did it because he is God with skin in the game Emmanuel in the flesh and you see when he looked out on the crowds when he looked out on the crowds, he did so with real eyes and ears and a heart full of compassion, a compassion that drove him to teach and feed and heal and suffer and die, a, a compassion that is actually a, a family-filled compassion. That word for compassion even comes from a familial word, rechem. It's a, a Hebrew word that means womb as in a, a mother's womb, as in the unique love and an undeniable link a mother has with her child. That is the compassion with which Jesus looks out onto the world and lives in the world doing his ministry not only 2,000 years ago but now in the body of Christ that compassion that is like no other. That's the same love that reached out his arms on Calvary and reaches out to bring more sons, more daughters, brothers, sisters, mothers into our Heavenly Father's family. And that's the truth that brings us together in power and purpose because, friends, that is our big brother who's brought us home. Jesus is your big brother. He delights to call you his brothers and his sisters. While we were in our sin, just at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were enemies of God, he gave his life for you to make those of you who are far off now close to him. Family family. Behold your son. Behold your mother. God's word gives us great power. God's word gives us great purpose as well. About 10 years ago, uh, I lost my grandmother, like my last remaining grandmother, in a car accident. I remember going to visit one of my shut-ins at the time. Uh, she was over in a nursing home. I, I can't get into any nursing homes. Uh, this week, but I'm looking forward to, to that again. But I was there several years ago, and as I was thinking about this, it dawned on me, and I was just thinking out loud, and sometimes I do that, and, and I said, I don't have any more grandmothers. I was visiting with one of my shut-in ladies, and I, I shared that without, without really even thinking. And, and you know, in her next breath, you know what she said? 
some of the most beautiful words. She didn't even hesitate. She said, I'll be your grandmother. I'll be your grandmother. You know how special those words have been to me these years? I'll be your grandmother. And now she is in heaven. She is in heaven, called home several years ago, but by saying these words from the cross, Jesus now says we have more grandparents, spiritual mothers, fathers, siblings, children, grandchildren, more than we ever knew we probably ever had. We in Christ have received the largest family connection as one in heaven and on earth. One of the best and most beautiful realities for those this side of heaven and through those this side of heaven. God is working his great love. God is providing. God is supporting, God ensuring, God teaching, God comforting with that same compassion of Jesus. See, that's your purpose. Mother, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Look left and right in your home. Look across the table, wherever you're viewing this from. Take a look at the pictures of the people on your refrigerator and consider, again, the family that God has given to you, maybe not blood related. Oh yeah, blood related through Jesus. We have fathers and grandsons and grandmas, maybe we never even knew we needed. Maybe we never even knew needed us. And so now I have lots of grandmas and my, my children who, whose grandparents live hundreds of miles away, they have lots of grandparents in our congregation. And in fact, one this last week who is, is shut in, we were able to go and not visit him in person, but go outside his window. And after it snowed, they made several snowmen for that member because he's family. His own wife can't come in to see him, but we could go there and give him that little gift. And there are ways that you can be engaging in people now, sending letters and calling them on the phone or, or doing what we're doing uh, via technology. And there are ways that we can meet in small groups and this, this too shall pass as, as far as the limitations that we have in, in gathering together. Look for those opportunities then, and with the power that God gives you to carry on, strength for the day, hope for tomorrow. He also gives you great purpose in Jesus as a family. Martin Luther, chronically ill, and finally critically so, he was actually alone uh, when he died. He had, he had chronic illness for uh, much of his life. Well, he scribbled a note that was found after he expired, and those famous last words uh, are known by many. He said, we are beggars, this is true. And yeah, it's true, we bring nothing before God, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. But sons and daughters of the king, talking to you now. We need not be beggars for family. We need not be beggars for family. Jesus says, behold your son. Behold your mother. Behold your sisters, your brothers, your grandparents, your grandchildren. These are better than some famous last words. These are a public proclamation and message of love and compassion spoken to you by Jesus just at the right time in the right place for such a time as this. One of his seven last words giving much needed power and purpose for you as his people. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ unto life. Amen. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you are our Heavenly Father, perfect in every way. And when our families fail, you freely forgive. Thank you for uniting us to you in the blood of your Son, Jesus, who you gave and in that giving spoke these words to us, along with John and Mary from the cross. Thank you for this message that's for us, just at the right time, just in the right place. Continue to empower us by the strength and power of your Holy Spirit, and help us to, in the purpose you give us, that is a lifelong purpose, help us to be looking out for those in our lives who need your love the most. All this we pray in the strong name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, risen from the dead. Amen.